Okay, hello and welcome to today's Dalcam Crispin uh, webinar. Um, and today, using Dalcam Crispin Shoemaker Pro as an example, um, we're going to explain how you can use CAD to reduce the time and the cost required to take your concept design to market. Uh, to help you understand um, how we're going to explain this, we'll begin by giving you a brief overview of how Shoemaker Pro fits into the wider Dalcam Crispin CAD CAM range. This will be followed by a live demonstration of Shoemaker Pro. And finally, we'll show you how you can try the software for free um, and we'll offer an opportunity to ask any questions. So to provide some context, consumers want an increasing choice and a regular supply of new designs. This means manufacturers are under pressure to frequently renew their product lines in order to remain competitive. As a result, the industry is constantly, has to, uh, is constantly striving to reduce the amount of time it spends designing, developing, selecting and getting new shoes onto the market. CAD software such as Dalcam Crispin helps you remain competitive by minimizing the time and the cost it takes to design and manufacture shoes. It achieves this by pro providing a range of CAD CAM software that is used by some of the world's leading footwear brands. And it provides everything you need from concept design through to product manufacture. So how does Dalcam Crispin do this? Well, Dalcam Crispin provides a complete solution that covers all aspects of footwear production, including last design, shoe design, pattern making and pattern grading, pattern cutting, sole engineering, costing, and producing a technical specification as well as an integrated product lifecycle management system. With Dalcam Crispin, all these packages work together so you benefit from better efficiency and you only have one supplier to contact if you need any help or support. So how can using a CAD package such as this um, help save you time and money? Well, Dalcam Crispin Last Maker enables you to edit the 3D last on your workstation quickly and easily. You can make dynamic modifications to your last, such as changing the shape of the toe end, widening or increasing the last length. This reduces your reliability on third party last makers. If you want to use your last at a later date, you can use the search function to find it in the last library quickly and easily. Now once you've created your 3D last, you can easily import it into Dalcam Crispin Shoemaker or Shoemaker Pro, where you can create a 3D design. It's likely that your designers usually provide sketches produced by hand or in a 2D design package such as Adobe Illustrator. To make creating your 3D design as quick and easy as possible, Shoemaker allows you to easily wrap a 2D JPEG or Adobe Illustrator file onto the surface of the last. It will immediately convert vectors into 3D star lines so you can make necessary alterations quickly and easily. Alternatively, you can use a digitizer touch screen or your mouse to draw star lines directly onto the last and we'll show you how to do all of this in the demonstration a little bit later on in today's webinar. If you also design soles, you can easily import your sole design directly from Dalcam Crispin Sole Engineer. Furthermore, you can design and grade the upper and the sole in the same 3D environment so you achieve accuracy quickly. You can also export to a 3D printer for rapid prototyping which helps reduce the time and the cost of product development. Once you've produced your star lines in Shoemaker, you can easily add more detail by coloring the panels of your shoe with your own scanned in textures. Advanced modeling tools within Shoemaker Pro enable you to add even finer detail. This creates a photorealistic final sample which can significantly cut down on the time and the costs associated with producing physical samples. This is because digital samples make design reviews more productive by reducing designer ambiguity. In addition, many of your competitors are allowing their sales team to use their laptop or tablet to present these 3D samples to buyers. This means they can release new designs more quickly whilst producing fewer physical samples, saving literally millions of dollars every year. From here, you can use Dalcam Crispin Engineer Pro to semi-automatically generate 2D patterns. Now, if you're an experienced pattern engineer, you can no doubt produce new patterns by hand very, very quickly. However, by using a set of footwear-specific tools to digitize your pattern, 
Engineer Pro lets you edit the pattern in much less time and with better precision. The result is you'll no longer need to make compromises in production, you'll produce a better quality shoe and you'll get designs to manufacture much more quickly. You can then output to us to software to cut patterns or production parts quickly and easily. Now, while doing all of this, it's important for you to know how much each shoe will cost to manufacture. And to do this, you can use shoe cost. This produces costing estimates based on how much your patterns will nest onto synthetic fabrics or leather hides for cutting. Furthermore, you can use TechPack to generate the documentation you need about the specification and manufacturing process for each shoe. In addition, to make managing the design and manufacturing process as efficient as possible, there's an integrated product lifecycle uh, product lifecycle management system integrated into all Delcam Crispin CAD products called Shoe Cloud. This enables all information about each shoe you design to be stored in the cloud. Under full revision control with tracking information and email notifications, this makes the design process really as efficient as possible. All of this can be achieved without the need to continually, continually import and export individual files, which takes time and can result in data loss. Instead, all Dalcam Crispin software uses a single .shu file, which contains all the information you need, um, which contains all the information you need for every element of your shoe. Each piece of our software automatically extracts the data it needs from the .shoe file so you don't need to worry about which file to open at each stage of the process. For example, open the file in Shoemaker and it will automatically access the 3D shoe design information required to produce a 3D model. And open the file in Delcam Crispin Engineer Pro and the software will automatically use the 3D shoe design to generate an accurate 2D pattern so you only need to add the finishing touches. Furthermore, if you don't purchase all the software at the beginning, the .shoe file that you create will still contain the information you need downstream should you choose to purchase additional software from the Delcam Crispin range at a later date. Now the software works best with other software from the Delcam Crispin range, but each package can be used independently and it works exceptionally well with non-Delcam Crispin software too. You can import and export all the typical formats such as STL and IGES, as well as import and export files such as Adobe Illustrator, Autodesk DXF and Rhino 2. Unlike other CAD software, which produces files made up of millions of small facets, Delcam Crispin Shoemaker creates full solid models using the industry standard Parasolid kernel. This makes it easy to transfer 3D models into and out of most competitive mainstream CAD systems such as SolidWorks, SolidEdge, Siemens and X and others too. Okay, in a few moments, um, I'll hand you over to my colleague Ian Ravenscroft. He's going to um, give you a live demonstration of Shoemaker Pro. Uh, but before I do, I thought you'd like to see some examples of shoes designed using the software. Now, some of these shoes have been designed by students and freelance designers. However, the majority are designed by professional designers working for organizations that design and manufacture shoes for retail. None of the images you see here are photographs, all of them are rendered solely on Shoemaker or Shoemaker Pro. So you can see just how realistic some of these images are. And this demonstrates how it's possible to replace physical prototypes and physical samples with rendered 3D models. Okay, um, this will help you uh, get designs to market faster and it will reduce the costs helping your business stay competitive. Okay, so I'm going to hand you over to my colleague Ian now. Um, he's going to give a live demonstration of some of the key features of Shoemaker Pro um, and afterwards we'll explain how you can uh, request a free trial version of the software and give you an opportunity to ask any questions. So over to you Ian. Okay, thanks Ian. So uh, I'm going to give you a, a brief demonstration, an overview demonstration of Shoemaker Pro 2013 R1 which is our current customer release version. Um, so before I start, let me just explain the screen layout to you. So across the top of the screen, we have uh, our creation entities. Uh, I start on the left-hand side, where I've got lasts. We then work our way through style lines, shoe pieces, etc., all the way to the end, where we have laces, soles, 
and manufacturing and export. Down the right hand side I have some standard views that I can use to, to look at the design and the last from different directions. Uh, on the left hand side I have options so when I enter one of the creation entities we have options for that creation entity. So if I enter star lines we have star line options, stitches, we have stitching options etc. Now at the bottom of the screen we have the library window uh, which at the moment is showing the last library. Now this library window can be changed to show the different libraries that we have. So I can touch on these buttons at the bottom and open the materials library, stitches library, accessories, etc. So we can choose the library that's displayed at any one time. Okay, so if we start with um, lasts, so you can see at the bottom I have the last library window open. I could double click on any of these lasts, that would open the lasts open that particular last for, um, for designing upon. Now I've already selected the last I'm going to use so I'm going to jump forward to the uh, second creation entity which is star lines, star line curves. So let me start just by uh, clicking the button to create star line curves. My cursor changes to a pencil indicating that I'm in sketching mode and now I can sketch points on the last to create my star line curves. Every point I click with the left mouse button is on the last and I have certain uh, hotkeys I can use like the one I just used there which makes a point which is at right angles to the center line. Okay, so I can um, create star line curves. Now in this case I've deliberately only created the curves on one side of the last. We can go straight across the center line if we want. But here I've created curves on one side because I want to show you that we've got the ability to mirror the star line curves and I can either do this as a linked operation or as an unlinked operation. So in this case if I make a linked mirror to get the curves on the opposite side because this is a linked mirror if I change the curves on either side the opposite side will automatically update to keep the two halves synchronized. Okay so we can create and edit star line curves. Um, now what I've done there is just deleted the curves I've created because I want to show you another option which is the ability to import a designer's picture and to use that as a basis for our curve sketching. So what I've done here is I've imported uh, just a JPEG image and this could have been created using pencils and pens and scanned in. Uh, this could have been created using Adobe or Photoshop type tools. It doesn't matter how the sketch is created. We can import it into Shoemaker and then I need to do an alignment. So we can rotate and move the last dynamically until we get uh, the last correct and I can also use the dynamic tools on the edge of the image to change the image so I can stretch and pull, uh, rotate and mirror the image uh, until I get a good alignment between the image and the last. When I'm happy with my alignment I can lock the two together and now if I rotate or move everything is synchronized and moves together. Now the purpose generally of importing uh, a designer sketch is to use it as a template for star line curve sketching. So here I'm sketching straight through the designer sketch onto the last to create my star line curves. And if I rotate this around you can see exactly what we're doing here. Okay, so let me undraw the designer sketch and I'm going to draw the rest of the design lines for this particular design. Now the design that I'm going to use for the demonstration today is fairly complex in nature. So all of the other star line curves you can see on the screen, I've created these previously and stored them on a level and I've just turned that level on. So Shoemaker has uh, lots of levels that can be used for organizing data which helps a lot, particularly with complex designs. Now the, the uh, design line we sketch at the front, I need a copy of that so I'm going to make an unlinked mirror at the front and I'm just going to zoom in at the end point and just dynamically edit that point to make sure it's in the correct location for the next element which is piece creation. Okay so if we come into piece creation mode what I can do now is I'm starting to chain together the star line curves that I've created and you'll notice here the feather edge is automatically um, added as a, a star line also the center line curve and the back curve are automatically added as star line curves. So here I've given Shoemaker a closed region and it's now creating a shoe piece. And there you can see is our first shoe piece created. 
So let me just turn off the star line curves and turn off the last and zoom in on the shoe piece we've just created because I want to show you the default properties that we have for shoe pieces. So this particular shoe piece has a default inside, outside and edge material, all of which can be changed. Also it has a default offset from the last and a default thickness and all of these can be changed. We can double click and use very simple drag and drop tools to change anything about this piece at all. So for instance, if I wanted to change the material, I can simply open the materials library and then drag and drop any of the materials from the library uh, into the background or onto the shoe piece and the material will update. And we can do that for the inside and the edge as well. Okay, so let me again drop back into um, shoe piece creation where again I'm going to start to chain together uh, the regions where I want the shoe piece to be created and there's our second shoe piece. Now again in a similar way to star lines uh, because this is a fairly complex design the other shoe pieces I need for this design I've already created them stored them on a level and again I've just turned that level on so there you can see all of the, the shoe pieces in place. Um, now one of the features of Shoemaker which is very useful is the ability to copy properties from one element to another and I'll show you an example of this right now. So this shoe piece here has a set of properties and I wish to copy those properties from this shoe piece to the shoe piece we created at the front. So I can hit the copy properties button, I have control over the properties that I do copy, so in this case I'm copying all of them all the materials inside, outside and edge, I'm copying the uh, thickness and the offset from the last from the selected shoe piece to the one we created. I can repeat that operation uh, with the other shoe pieces like so. So it's a very quick method of copying uh, from one element to another to make sure everything colour coded and matching. Okay, so all of my shoe pieces are complete. So if we move forward to the next creation entity, which is stitching, and I'll open the, the stitch library. So you can see at the bottom we have a library of stitches which you can add to. But by default you have cross stitching, zigzag stitching, single row, double row, etc. So I'm going to choose single, single row stitching. And I have a number of different methods I could use for adding stitching to the design. So I could sketch stitching with a cursor. I could use existing star line curves, but in this case I'm going to apply stitching to an existing shoe piece. Okay, so I've picked the shoe piece and I'm now interactively selecting the edges that I wish the stitching to be applied to. Shoemaker shows me a preview which I can accept and as soon as we accept that the stitching is created. Now if I uh, zoom in on the stitching you'll notice that our stitches are 3D elements. Um, so this is great if you're manufacturing or if you're creating the model for manufacturing purposes like rapid prototyping. Uh, it means the stitching come out extremely lifelike. Now again, because this is a fairly complex design, the other stitching for this particular design I had stored on a level, which I've just turned on. And again, I'm now using the copy properties uh, button to copy the properties from one of the existing stitch elements to the ones we've just created. Okay, so let's move forward to the next creation element, which is piping. And to show you piping clearly, I'm just going to turn off the display of the shoe pieces momentarily. And I'll open the pipes library, and I'll select the page where I have rounds. And again, I, have, I can either sketch pipes, or I can use existing star line curves to create a pipe. So in this case, I'm going to use the top edge uh, star line curves that we've used for the piece creation to create my piping. And again, I'm going to use copy properties to copy the color from the stitching onto the piping that we've just created to color code everything. So in this case, we're using piping to add a rounded edge uh, to the top edge of the design. Okay, so let's move forward to the next creation entity, which is punching. Now, generally speaking, punching tends to be used for creating any line of decorative holes. So here, we've actually used some punches to create the lace holes on this particular design. But again, at the bottom uh, on the library window, we have libraries of different punch shapes that we can use, and I have different methods of creating punches. So here I'm going to add some additional punch holes to the design by using this sketch method. Okay, so I'm going to sketch a, a row of punch holes like so, which we could pick up and move if we wanted to. 
Okay, so I could adjust the position like so dynamically. Now I'm going to select the punches I've just sketched and come over to the left hand menu where I have edit operations. And in this case, I'm just going to change the size. So I'm scrolling the middle mouse um, rotation button over the increase or decrease size option and that lets me dynamically change the size of the punch. Now at the moment those punch holes are just, just geometry that sits on the surface of the shoe piece. So what I can now do is tell Shoemaker how far I want those punch holes to be punched through the design. So in this case just through the shoe piece not all the way through to the last. Okay and you can see as soon as I select that option uh, those punches are used to create holes through the shoe piece they sit on. Okay, so those are um, punches. So let's move forward to the next creation entity, which is accessories. And again, I'll open the accessory library. This is one of the areas of uh, Shoemaker which is particularly strong because the accessories that we define and store in our library can have uh, a lot of, of detail or they can be very simple. You can choose. So here I've got the eyelets um, library. We've also got by default lugs. We've got buckles and hooks. But the library I'm going to use here is the loops library. So I'm going to add a loop to this particular design at the back. Before I do that, I'm just going to blank that back shoe piece just to help me with the location of the loop. I can then double click the loop in the library to create a single instance of that particular loop. And then position the origin of the loop like so. Now obviously the orientation of this loop is not correct, so again I can use the dynamic controls. I can scroll the middle mouse over the rotation control to, uh, to change the orientation of the loop to get it aligned as I need it. Okay, now also I can use copy properties to copy the color, maybe from the, uh, from the piping onto the loop to make sure that everything is color coded. Okay, so in that particular example I just created a single instance of an accessory, but we can also create chains of accessories as well. Okay, so those are accessories. So let's move forward to the next creation entity, which is laces. Now, this is again one of the areas of Shoemaker which is particularly strong because we have an automatic lacing routine. So if I hover my cursor over the left hand lacing option, you can see we've got six different lacing techniques that we can choose from. So here I'm going to choose this middle one which is crisscross lacing. Now as I mentioned uh, lacing in Shoemaker is automatic. So all I have to do here is select the elements I want the lacing to pass through. So in this case it's punch holes but these elements could be uh, accessories like eyelets or loops. They could also be a mixture of accessories and uh, punch holes. So I select the entities I want the laces to be created through then hit the accept button and Shoemaker automatically works out how the laces need to be applied to the design using the elements that were selected. Now again, laces, as with all other elements in Shoemaker, have default properties. So in this case, we have a default material, we have a default cross-sectional shape and cross-sectional size, and I can change any of those elements. So uh, let's say the material, I could come back to the materials page, I could select the laces tab, and I could drag and drop any of the materials from the library onto the design and that will update uh, the pattern used for the laces. Okay, so automatic lacing, a huge time saver uh, for anybody designing using Shoemaker Pro. So the final element, uh, creation element I'll show you is soles. Now I already have a fairly uh, complex sole created um, in this particular design environment. And I've zoomed in on the tread pattern here, so you can see we've got a fairly complex tread pattern applied to this, and I've also got logos on the side and on the bottom of the, of the design. I've got raised panels and channels on this uh, particular sole. So it's a reasonably complex, complex sole with a reasonable amount of detail on it. Um, now we can use um, Sole Engineer for creating soles of this nature. However, if you don't want to learn Sole Engineer, we also have some very simple sole creation um, wizards on the left hand sole menu. So here I have a simple wizard for creating a sports shoe sole, uh, a simple formal men's sole, a simple ladies uh, pointed heel sole and ladies square heel sole. So these are all options that you get by default, very easy to use and they help you create and add a sole to any design. 
Now, in this particular example, we've got a fairly complex soul already created. So what I'm going to do in the demonstration is make some edits to this uh, fairly complex soul. So any of the creation entities in, uh, in Shoemaker have an advanced mode. So for souls, if I hit the advanced mode button, that exposes a series of tools that we can use for making advanced changes to the soul. Okay, so again, I've just turned on a level which contains some 2D wireframe geometry that I'm going to use at the back of the sole to create an additional raised panel. So I'm now going to drop into limit mode. I'm going to select the limit operation I want to use and instruct um, sole engineer that I want to keep both elements after the limit operation. Now initially it appears that nothing has happened there, but now if I select the back region of the sole, you can see what we've actually done is split that into two inside the wireframe geometry and outside. Okay, so at the moment, that's, uh, the shape is still exactly the same. So we now got to create a raised panel at the back. Now, Soul Engineer is a hybrid modeling software package. So that means we're allowed to use any mixture of surfaces, solids, and triangles to create our design. So I'm going to convert that surface into a parasolid. So that's now a parasolid model, and that allows me to use solid modeling tools and techniques to affect the design. So here I'm going to use a solid thicken, I'm going to enter a thickness, and I'm going to enter a, an offset direction, and that's a simple method of creating a raised panel. Now the raised panel I've created here has got a sharp edge that I want to remove, so I can enter uh, a fillet radius value, I can pick the face that I want the uh, fillets to be applied to, and I can hit the apply button, and we automatically create uh, an edge fillet which just rounds off that sharp edge giving the panel a much nicer appearance. The final thing I'll do is again use the copy properties to copy from the white surface uh, to the raised panel at the back. And you can see with just a couple of simple operations, we've edited that sole design and created an additional raised panel at the back. Okay, so let me zoom in at the front, and the final thing I'll do to the sole is change this raised panel at the front. And the change I'm going to make here is to apply a texture to that front area, and this is, will be a 3D texture. So Soul Engineer allows us to have libraries of uh, flat triangle-based textures that we can wrap onto any part of our designs. And the wrapping process is performed with a six-stage wizard, which is very simple to use, and it guides the user through the process of wrapping flat triangle texture onto surfaces. So here, I've identified the triangle texture that I want to apply to the surface. I've chosen the wrapping method I want to use. Shoemaker is showing me an image-based preview of how the texture will look on the surface. This gives me the opportunity to affect that wrap. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using the slider bars, in this case, to change the size of the texture, just to make sure that the whole of that surface is encompassed, which it is. And then finally, I can choose uh, if I want to change the Z height, or the trimming that's used uh, when this texture is wrapped on to the surface. And you can see the actual wrap itself is very, very quick. That was a live wrap operation. And the result is a very complex texture wrapped onto a doubly curved region of a shoe sole to give this very nice effect. Now again, if you're making this model for rapid prototyping purposes, all the edges of the triangles are completely closed. So this is a closed, will be a closed watertight rapid prototyping model. Uh, the other thing I would point out here is that to create that complex 3D pattern using surface modeling or solid modeling techniques would take at least uh, hours, probably days. But with uh, the triangle wrapping tools in Soul Engineer, it takes minutes to create flat textures and it takes absolutely seconds to wrap them on. So it's a huge benefit to anybody applying textures to either parts of the upper of the sole or the, the tread pattern of the sole. Okay, so I'm happy with the design changes I've made to the sole, so I've now accepted those and we've gone back into, into shoemaker mode. Now here the design is, is fairly finished, however uh, one thing I'll show you is uh, on the view menu at the top I have a flyout which lets me change between 3D mode, sole bottom flattening and last upper flattening. So if we just drop into last upper flattening mode momentarily, I wanted to show you that all of the lasts in our last library 
have a 2D flattening stored with them. And that means that any 3D starline curves are automatically flattened to 2D. So without the designers having to make any effort whatsoever, the starline curves are automatically flattened and they can then uh, be used for exporting to uh, software like Crispin Engineer for pattern development. Okay, so those 2D starline curves can be exported to Crispin Engineer. Uh, the whole 3D model could be exported to software like Keyshot for performing uh, rendering of photorealistic images for use in marketing uh, materials or even design approval. The whole 3D design could be exported for rapid prototyping or additive manufacturing purposes. Um, so we can export OBJ with all of the textures intact uh, and that can be used for rapid prototyping. Uh, the other method which is fairly commonly uh, exported from uh, Shoemaker is the sole can be exported for mold development. So all of the molds can be manufactured from the soles and also the tool paths can then be ma manufactured from those soles. So really the key uh, message from that is that all of the design data that we create in Shoemaker is all manufacturing ready data. Okay, so that's the end of the software demonstration. So with that, I'll pass you back over to Ian Evans. Okay, thank you very much, Ian. Okay, one of the things that uh, Ian mentioned in the demonstration, um, and in fact that we mentioned earlier, is the quality of the renders that we can produce using Shoemaker. Um, so what I'm going to do in a moment is show you a digital render um, of the shoe that Ian has just designed. Now, I won't talk over the render because um, it's transmitting a video, it will break up my voice. We'll take a few moments just to take a look at the, the quality of the digital renders that we can produce. Okay, now if you want to try Shoemaker Pro for yourself, um, we do have a free version which you can download from our website. Um, it enables you to try all of the features that Ian's uh, shown you today in today's demonstration for yourself, um, so you can get a real good feel for what the software is like to use. Um, shortly after the webinar, um, we'll send you full details about how to, how to request uh, your free copy. Okay, if you have any questions about Shoemaker um, or any of the other products from the Dalcom Crispin range, uh, please feel free to email me. Um, my address is ije at dalcam.com. My name is Ian. Alternatively, if you visit www.dalcam-crispin.com, um, there is more information on there. But if you do have any questions, please do feel free to get in touch. We're more than happy to help you out. Uh, thanks, for to, uh, thanks for attending today's webinar. We hope you found it useful and informative.